Hi guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Ten Food Life. My name is Sibu Siso and this show is proudly brought to you by Liberty and it comes to you weekdays, Monday until Thursday from 5 p.m. up to 6 p.m. Remember, you can get in touch with us via social media. For that, just go to our Facebook page and also you can send us your questions or comments on WhatsApp and we'll be more than glad to take note or take uh, those into consideration. And by just so doing, you stand a chance to win awesome prizes such as data, airtime, as well as a 19-inch TV. This week, our show is going to be on a new topic. We are focused on differential calculus and to be specific today we are going to be doing differentiation from first principle remember based on what we do here you can also get more details by going to our app which is available on your app store just go and look for the tenfold education app it has got content for grade 10 up to grade 12 it will help you a lot in terms of preparing you for your exams which are very close right now okay now we're gonna go back to the math remember we said we are focusing on a new topic this week's topic is differentiation by first principle we are beginning our focus on calculus so you can start sending us those questions that you have on differentiation it might be things that you have already started looking at or maybe if you are studying ahead or even if your school hasn't yet uh, started with calculus just send us those questions we'll be more than glad to assist you to make sense of them so i'm now going to go to a question that was sent to us and it is a question that requires us to apply the concept of first principle. We are going to find the derivative by first principle. Now, it's very important for us to explain before we even get started with this concept that calculus is a very powerful concept. In grade 11, when you guys were doing analytical geometry to be exact, you used to find gradients between two points. If I was asking you to find a gradient in a particular function, I would need to give you two points. Now, between those two points, you could then do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to work out the gradient of that particular function. Now, in grade 12, we have got a new method of working out the gradient, not between two points, but at one point. And we call that instantaneous gradient. It's a very powerful concept. So we're now going to go to a question that is going to help us to make sense of this very interesting concept. If you look at the board right now, you will see that it says to us, differentiate using first principles. f of x equals 1 minus 2x squared. Now, because you're probably seeing this the first time, maybe if you haven't at all met this, we'll first of all start analyzing the given statements there. First of all, we're asking you to find the derivative of the function of f of x that is given to us. Now, these words are big, big, big words. Whenever you see these words, it means that we require you to apply the first principle formula, which is available in your formula sheet. The formula we use for finding the derivative by first principle is f prime of x equals the limit, right, as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f at x and everything is divided by h. Now this is a formula that we use to find the derivative from first principle. Let me explain first of all what this part is. This is in fact literally asking you to work out the gradient. This derivative is the gradient not between two points but at a point and we call this instantaneous gradient very powerful instantaneous gradient very powerful and it's very important for you to know that it is different from average gradient because average gradient is the gradient that you find between two points if i might just uh, elaborate there that we've got two types of gradients if i give you maybe a function and i give you a point there which i call point a and then I give you another point there, which I call point B. I can, of course, ask you to find the gradient between those two points. You can then apply y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this is what you would call then the average gradient. But now, in grade 12, when we're using calculus, we use it to work out the gradient not between two points, but at one point. So we kind of like remove the other point. And we expect you to work out the gradient of this particular graph at this point. Maybe if I had to draw a tangent there, what will be the gradient of this tangent? And that's what this thing is actually all about. So let's see what we can do in this particular question. Now, if I go back and I rewrite my formula for first principles and show you the elements that we need to work it out, it says the derivative, right, is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f at x, everything divided by h. Now, you will notice that we need to find two things here. 
in order to work out the solution to this. We must find f of x, which we already have because the question right there at the top, it already comes with f of x. So the only thing that we really need to work out here is what is f of x plus h? So we can substitute in our formula and then we can be able to simplify this. So allow me to work it out there, the top left corner. We already have f of x as 1 minus 2x squared. So I'm going to attempt to work out f of x plus h. And what is this actually? It just means wherever you see x, just replace it with x plus h. There's a 1. So there's my 1 minus. There's the minus. There's a 2. And then we've got x plus h, which is the value of what we get when we substitute our x value with x plus h. Now, if I simplify this further, there's a 1. There's my 1 there. Minus 2 in brackets. x plus h squared is squaring a binomial, which is actually going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. If I simplify further, we are going to have 1 minus, if you multiply in with 2, it will be 2x squared, and then 2 times 2 will be minus 4xh, and then 2 times h will be minus 2h squared. So I now have my f of x plus h, we can, which I can now substitute in um, the formula for working out the derivative by first principle. It's just a fancy way of saying work out the gradient at one point. So now let's see what will happen. My f of x plus h, I worked it out there. It is 1 minus 2x squared minus 4xh uh, minus 2h squared. There's a minus in the formula, right? Minus. And then my f of x. What is our f of x? It was given to us in a statement as 1, one minus 2x squared. So I'm going to write that. 1 minus 2x squared, close bracket, everything divided by h. If we simplify this further, let's see what will happen. Right? So remember to keep writing the limit. You are not allowed to write, uh, to exclude this limit until you have replaced your h as 0. So if I simplify this, we'll have 1 minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared. And then when you multiply by the negative in here, we're going to have minus 1 and plus 2x squared, everything divided by h. If I simplify this further, what will happen? Well, we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0. And let's see if there are any like terms that can actually uh, simplify here. I've got a 1 and a 1 in the numerator. The 1 will cancel a 1. I also have negative 2x squared, which will also cancel, excuse me, 2x squared, leaving us with what? Leaving us with that minus 4xh and minus 2h squared all over h. Now, once you are here, it's important for you to understand that according to this, wherever you see h, you must replace it with 0. But you need to keep in mind that if I replace the current h by 0, it will be division by 0. And division by 0 in math is not possible. We don't actually have a solution to that. So my, my goal in the whole process is just to delete the h on the denominator. Once I have that h removed, then everything else will work out fine. So let's see what will happen if I continue with this. Right. right. So now I'm actually going to have the limit as h approaches 0. On the numerator there, you'll notice that I've got a common factor, which is h. So I'm going to factor it out. It's going to be h into minus 4x minus 2h all over h. Now, that h on the denominator can now be removed. So I'm going to actually have the limit as h approaches 0. And then closely, you'll see that h can now remove h. Once I have removed those h's, I'm now going to be left with 4x minus 2h which now means I am ready to substitute my h as 0, which is the requirement for working out the limit of any function. I can now put my h as 0, and then I'll actually have minus 4x minus 2 into h, which when I simplify, it will amount to negative 4x. So in total, that is the derivative. Therefore, f prime of x is equal to negative 4x. So this basically means that is the gradient of this function that we are given at any x value that you, might, that you might be working with. So it's important for you to understand that the gradient normally from grade 11, we used to call it average gradient. It is, it is between two points, average gradient. But the one we are working with now, it is gradient at one point, instantaneous gradient. So for that, you just need to simply work out the derivative using the first principle. Once you arrive at an answer, I can give you any point. Maybe if I say um, at a point where x is 1, you can now substitute the 1 by your function and then get the derivative there. Or I might even say where x is negative 3, then you can be able to get me the gradient. So it's a very powerful concept. 
it is a first principle, it's differentiation by applying a first principle. And last question indeed, we are now going to um, go to an ad break. When you return, we've got more math for you. Julian is on standby to take another question to help you to make sense of this concept.